During my Amazon internship, they gave all the interns computers with Linux installed with only a command line. And most of the other interns were pretty confused, but me having had experience in the command line, I was able to go in and get everything set up and even help the others get their computers set up. So it definitely scored me some extra credit points and I think the others were impressed. That's why I believe every programmer, sorry, every good programmer should be able to maneuver and navigate using the command line. So in this video, I'm gonna be going over 50 common Linux commands that I think every developer should know. So for this video, I'm using Ubuntu version 22.04.4 but most of these commands will work on any Linux distribution. So when you open up your terminal, it usually starts with your home directory. If you wanna know where you are, type PWD for print working directory. If you wanna list the contents of a directory, you're gonna use ls. If you want a little more information, you can use an option, dash a, to show all the hidden files, as well as list the files to see things like the permission and the size. If you wanna change directories, you use cd, which you guessed it, stands for change directory, and the name of the directory you wanna go into. If you're like me and you like working with a clean sheet, you can use the clear command to start back at the top. I definitely overuse this. All right, time out. I gotta do a shameless plug here. If you wanna learn more about these commands, I'd go much more in depth with them in my course, Linux Command for Beginners, where I cover everything in this video as well as some more commands. So I'll leave a link to that down in the description if you wanna check it out. All right, back to the video. Okay, let's go back to our home directory. If we wanna create a blank file, we can use the touch command with the name of the file. We'll call it foo.txt, and now we see we have a new file in our home directory. If we wanna edit the file, we can use one of the command line text editors. In my opinion, the best one is vim. So we type vim, then the name of the file. Now if we wanna start typing, we type i, and then type whatever we want. I'm going to make a shopping list of things I wanna buy. So we'll do milk, eggs, and I think I'll fast forward this part. If you wanna escape out of vim, you type escape colon wq. If we wanna copy a file, you use the cp command. So if we wanna copy foo.txt, and let's say we wanna copy it to desktop, and we can also give it another name called foo.copy.txt. And if we wanna ls desktop, we see that it was copied. If we wanna move a file, you use the move command. That's gonna be mv, and let's move desktop slash foo copy to our current directory. Now if we wanna do our current directory, we can just use a period. If we ls, we see that it's in there. You can also use move to rename a file. So let's say foo copy, and then you just give it the name that you wanna change it to. Let's just call it foo2, and we have foo2. If we wanna delete a file or directory, we use the rm command. So rm foo22.txt, and we see that that file is gone. If we wanna create a directory, we use mkdir, and the name of the directory. We'll call it my dir. If you wanna see a history of your commands, you type history, and it'll give you the last several thousand commands that you've written. If you wanna see how much space you have on your disk, you type df, and it'll let you know how much you've used and available in one kilobyte blocks. If we wanna print out the contents of a file, we use the cat command followed by the file. If it's a really long file and we don't wanna print out all the contents, we can use less. And you can press enter to go page by page or space to go line by line. And you can press Q to exit. Linux commands are separated into different types and you can figure out which type by using the type command. So if we type ls, we see ls is an alias, which we'll learn about in a second. The cd command is a shell built in. The ls command is a command in the user bin directory. If you wanna know who you are, you type who am I and it'll give you your username. If you wanna see where a command exists, you can use the which command. So you can do something like which git. If you wanna know more about a command, you can use the man pages and you actually have to say it like that every time, man pages. So you type man and the name of the command, and it tells you the name, a description, as well as all the options and some more information. If you don't wanna go into the man pages and you just wanna look up a quick description, you can use what is, which, and it just gives you a one line definition of what that command does. We also have the alias command. This allows you to create a shortcut for a command. So when we type ls, what we're actually typing is ls dash dash color equals auto. So for example, if we actually type ls color equals auto and we type ls, it's the exact same command. You can also create your own aliases if you'd like. If you wanna sort something, you can use the sort command. So we could print out the contents of foo.txt and we could use the output of that as the input of our sort command. And we do this using the pipe command. So as we see here, the contents of foo.txt have now been sorted and printed out to the console. We can use the grep command if we wanna search for a particular text or regular expression. So we could do the same thing here, but this time we're gonna grep for anything that has toes in it. 
and we see we have potatoes and tomatoes. We can use the WC command if we want to get the lines, the amount of words, and the bytes for a file. So if we do WC foo.txt, we see we have 22 lines, 22 words, and 141 characters. If you only want to see the first few lines of a file, you can use the head command. By default, it'll show the first 10 lines, but we can use an option of how many lines we want to see. So if we want to see the first three lines, we use dash three. Tail is the same thing, but for the end of the file. So if we want to see the last three lines, we use tail dash three foo.txt. We can use the echo command to print out something to the command line. Now it's kind of useless in this case, but if you're writing something like a shell script and you want to update the user about what's going on, you could do something like starting download or finished, etc. We can use the ID command if we want to see our user ID in the system, our group ID, and the groups our user belongs to. Now there may be certain commands you try to run that only the super user has privilege to run. In order to do this, you use the sudo command. So if we try to list the contents of the root directory, it's gonna say permission denied. You're not the super user. We can do sudo ls root, and we see well, there's only one file in there. Every file or directory you create on a Linux system has an owner. So if we do ls-l, we see our foo.txt file has an owner of Sam, that's me. But we can change the owner by using C-H-O-W-N. Now you do have to be super user to do this. So we can change the owner to, there's another user on my system named Mike, and which file do we want to change? So now if we ls-l foo.txt, we see the owner is now Mike. This here is the group, that doesn't change, but the owner changed to Mike. Let's give Sam back his file. Now every file and directory also has certain permissions you want to run. If we want to change those permissions, we use sudo C-H-M-O-D, and we use what's called the octal representation of it. How that works is uh, kind of outside the scope of the video, but it's basically three numbers which represent the permissions. So let's say we want to give read permissions to everyone, but no one can write or execute this file. We use 444. If we do LSL, we see that foo.txt has read, 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 but nothing else. If we want to add a user to our system, we use sudo add user and the name of the user. Let's call it Becky. Give them a password. If it's a bad password, it's gonna complain. And there we go. If we wanna switch users, we use sue and the name of the user. So if we wanna to change to Becky, we type in her password. And now, who am I? I'm Becky. Let's change back to Sam. If we wanna download a file, we can use wget. So let's say we wanna download jQuery. This is the URL for jQuery. If we want to give it a custom name, we use dash with a capital O, and let's just call it jQuery. We see that it was successfully downloaded, and if we want to, let's less jQuery, we see we have the contents here. If we want to view the processes that are running on our system, we use PS. Now these are just processes that are running on our terminal. If we want to view all the processes running on the system, we use PSX. If we want a dynamic view of all the processes that are running, we use top. And as you can see, this gives us a live view of the processes that are currently running. I'm gonna give myself a little bit more space for this next one. So there's a special program here that I like to use called xlogo for demonstration purposes. So if we run this, well, we can't write any more commands. So if we wanna run this program and still be able to run commands, we use xlogo with an ampersand. And this is saying, hey, run this program, but run it in the background because I still want to write some commands. If we type jobs, we can see all our current running processes. If you want to bring it back to the foreground, you type FG, percent, and then the job ID, which is one. So now if you're stuck here and you don't know what to do, to kill the program, you type control C. And if we go back to jobs, we see that there's nothing there. We can also kill a job by running the kill command. So we see it has a process ID of 25,820. So we can type kill 25820. And if we type jobs, we see that X logo has been terminated. Fun fact, kill doesn't actually kill the process. It sends a kill signal saying, hey, I want you to kill yourself. It's kind of dark, but that's how it works. We have print env, which prints out all the environment variables. So things like your user, your home directory, the language, and a lot of information that honestly you probably never use. If you want to download a package that's not installed on your system, you can use apt for Debian versions of Linux like Ubuntu or yum for Red Hat distributions. I'm on Ubuntu, so I'm gonna use apt. So you could do something like sudo apt install git. 
I already have git installed, so it doesn't install a new version. If you want to remove something, you would just use sudo apt remove, and then whatever you want to remove. We can use the ping command to send a packet to an IP address or a domain name to see if it's up and running. So something like google.com. If you hit control C, then it'll show you the statistics of the program. If you want to see all the individual routers that were hit while making a request, you can use trace route and then something like google.com. And we see that it went through nine routers to eventually reach there. We can use IP A if we want to get information about the network interfaces on our system. So the first one is the loopback. This is just the system itself or local host. And number two here is our ethernet port. The two most important things are the up to show that it's up and running and the IP address. If we want to connect to a remote system, we use SSH or secure shell. So we use SSH followed by the username and the server we want to connect to. I'm just going to use localhost for this. So I'm going to do something like Becky at localhost, type in the password. And in this example, we're on the same system, but just pretend we're connecting to a remote system. We now have access to that system. And most importantly, it's encrypted. If we want to exit out of a shell, we press exit. So this exits out of Becky's shell. And now we're back at Sam's shell. If we type exit again, we see that the terminal is terminated. A Linux system has a ton of files and directories, and we have tools that help us find them. The first one is locate. And what this does is it matches all the paths that match the input that we give it. And it doesn't necessarily have to be at the beginning. It can be, it can be anywhere on the path. So here we see we have something like bin slash zip. However, it only works with names. If we want to get a little bit more in depth, we can use the find command. So if we want to search our home directory and all its subdirectories, we use find. And then we can use an option called type. And this says, okay, do we want to do like all the directories, all the files? Let's see how many directories we have. Okay, we have a lot. If we want to see how many, we can pipe that into WC. And we see that we have 359. But let's talk about compressing files. So let's compress this jQuery file. We'll see right now it's 87,000 bytes. So we can use gzip, which is the preferred way to compress files in Linux. And we'll gzip jQuery. So now if we ls-l, we see that it's now jQuery.gz and it's a much smaller file. If we want to unzip, we use gunzip. And we see we get the original file back. Now gzip only compresses one file, but if we want to zip up a collection of files, we first need to archive it using tar. So let's create a directory called playground and let's create 100 files in playground. So we'll call it file dash. Now we can do this in one line and we can use a range here of 001 dot dot 100. So if we ls playground, we see we have 100 files now. Now if we want to archive these, we use tar, cf, and then the name we want to save to, so playground.tar, and then what do we actually want to archive? We want to archive, archive the playground directory. So now if we do ls, we see we have playground.tar. We can also use zip to archive and compress. So we type zip dash r, playground.zip, and we want to zip playground. Now if we type ls, we see we have playground.zip. In a Linux system, you're usually going to want to use tar because tar preserves things like the file permissions and a bunch of other metadata. However, if you need to transfer something from, let's say, a Linux system to a Windows system, that's when you'd want to use zip. So let me know in the comments how many commands you knew or let me know if there are any new ones that you learned about. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, keep on coding. And don't ever stop.